here's the deal. I tried to film this about 15 times in intro, so I probably already dubbed in something. But basically, I need a hairpin leg bench for my office. I went on Pinterest and I searched for that and this viral pin popped up and wouldn't you know it, it is Mr. Ben Ueda from Homemade Modern's DIY tutorial. So with this whole YouTube testing thing going on where people test other people's DIYs, I figured why not just show you the process of doing one of his tutorials. The reason we are filming this today is because my hairpin legs got overnighted by Amazon because I've seen the tutorial and I literally needed to do it. I knew my local Home Depot did not have hairpin legs um, because I shop there all the time and I looked for them. So, Amazon Prime, we got them. You can do whatever size hairpin leg that you want. I went with a 16 inch, which is also what he uses. I got them from Rebel Home. And these were about, I'm pretty sure $39.95 for four of them. I think the ones on Home Depot are actually $17.98, if I am correct, per leg. So again, I love my Home Depot family, but I like saving my money too. Let's get started with Mr. Ben's tutorial. Also, I reached out to him and asked him if I could make a video of me redoing his 2014 bench and he gave me the good thumbs up. So thank you so much, Ben. I'm excited to do this. Hi, I'm Ben. Today I'm gonna show you how to make this bench. Let's do it, Ben. Here's what you need to get started. It's a by 12. Boom. A set of pre-made legs. Boom. And orbitals. Boom. A cordless drum. Boom. And the circular saw. I almost stabbed myself. Cut the circular two by saw. To the desired length. Cut the two by two. Car pattern. Okay. Cut the two by 12 by my desired length. This is fun, I've never like DIY with you guys just for fun, not creating a tutorial, but doing a tutorial. So I'm gonna do 55 inches. Oh my God, I need to clamp this wood down. Let me get clamps. Clampies. I'm gonna Jesus. Goo bales. This is straight, cause your girl can't even. With a box cutter. With a box cutter. Sand the board smooth. You're doing that mighty fast, Mr. Bad. Oh, that's a cool little tip. Oh, this is a good tip. I never thought of this. This is definitely kind of ridiculous, but I get it. I see. I think I just have to get the right angle. I'm figuring it out, kind of. If you're gonna do this, do not use a dollar store box cutter. Okay, I'm getting the hang of this. Over. <laughs> Cramping. You know, he doesn't tell you how much to shave down the wood. So, to a new wood shaver such as myself, I feel like if you don't have self control, you could get a little like, too aggressive with the shave down. So, I'm trying to keep that in mind. But it's like when you start making it and you see where it's feet up, it looks Oh, cool. oh my gosh, this right hand is too aggressive. Fun fact about Ben is I fangirled out on a video of him. He had a wireless glue gun that commented, and he shipped me not only the glue gun, but all my first set of power tools from Ryobi. So he is the man. Thanks, Ben. So cool when other creators such as Ben is like the mecca to me just for modern design. Um, took the time out to do that and comment back and like fuel someone else's creativity within power tools. Like, so rad to see someone doing that. I love being able to share with you guys what creators I pull my main inspiration from, and Ben is a huge one. So, this next step was to sand this down. And this is where we're gonna get real dirty. I'm gonna put on glasses just because I have the worst allergies right now. And a mask because I get the craziest bogeys if I don't. Now, this seems dramatic, but, oh, as they say that I'm bleeding, that's typical. So, I messed up big time. You know how you said get a two by eight by 12? Well, I didn't. I got a two by eight by eight, which means these legs 
aren't gonna fit after I just cut that, sanded it, just did all the edge work. Gotta go back to Home Depot. I can't believe I got the wrong size. But a friend of mine knit a cover for the bed. Knit a cover. They used extra yarn just to lace it up like a... I have no friends and I have no friends that knit, so I will also need to stop at the craft store to grab some thick yarn to figure something out. I am back with the right size board. Oh my gosh, look how much better that is. Legs can fit. Nice and snug. So now we just need to repeat the process that we did on the board that was too small to the board that is the perfect size. While I was out correcting my mistake, I got a new box cutter, so hopefully this goes a little bit more smoothly. Some new sandpaper rounds to make sure that this gets sanded down nice and easy. I stopped by Michael's because I watched Russ a tutorial and someone knitted him a sleeve. I am actually going to weave a sleeve instead of knitting it. I'm gonna start this process over again. I need a screwdriver. How much I like the like official box cutters. Crap. It'd be nice to know how to put this together, but I do not know how. Why did I just break this? Is that how this goes? I don't know. So I think if I didn't mess up, wow. That's really dangerous. What is my life? Oh my gosh, Rachel, come on. Like, what are you doing? It makes my life so much easier. What is happening right now? This here, okay, open. Okay, now this guy, but where do you go? Who am I? I just want to get to my DIY. How is this now just not fitting? Who am I? Now we get to the shaving part. Yeah, this is way easier to do. And now what he does is just finish it with Danish oil. I love it, I love it, I love it. Blood surface using brush or cloth. Press to close. Push down and turn. Why can't I do everyday life things right now? Oh my god, what is going on with me right now? I'm pretty sure I look crazy, but whatever. Whoa, that looks nuts. I probably should have used a rag. Start this at two, it's now six, and I can keep going, but I'm gonna let this dry for another 15 minutes and then wipe it completely down. I'm gonna finish the rest of it tomorrow because it should only take me a couple of hours just because I have to leave the one thing I was telling you about, the cover. But so far, so good. Only my mistakes because of the wood situation. Good morning. It's the next day. I was really toying with the idea last night of how to make a sleeve that anybody can do. And I don't know if this is a very long process, this was just something that popped in my head, like people that don't wanna build a loom where you can weave stuff, people that don't know how to knit and don't have the time to learn. I'm gonna show you a pretty simple way, hopefully, cause I've never done this before, it's just an idea that I have in my brain, but um, I'm gonna show you how to weave without a loom and just kind of DIY it to the extreme of not having to spend too much time learning or executing. But first things first, we just have to add the legs to this guy. I'm a little nervous to flip this over, I'm not gonna lie. So this should be the moment of truth. I think I put the legs the wrong way. Oh my god. Why does this look so weird to me? Is this how this goes? Hold, oh, please. Let's see. No, those are the right way. I just put them absolutely close together. Now, other people's looks weird too when it's a skinnier bunch. But that's okay. All right. There we go. So, this portion is done. You can leave it as is and you can put it right into your space if that's how you like it. You can stain it, paint it, you can do some designs on it. I am leaving it plain. But like I said, I'm gonna do this sleeve portion in a way hopefully everybody can do it. I really like the option to have it naked, but because, again, my office has so much raw wood in it because of the pegboard, I wanna make sure I can cover this up, which will allow me to also blend it in with my white couch and my white pillows. Ben doesn't go into detail about how the sleeve was knitted, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do a detailed tutorial for you guys within this one to show you how I created the sleeve for my table because like I said, I don't wanna leave it naked, I wanna add it. So let's just jump on into that. I love this thing, thank you Ben.
I started out by measuring how long I wanted the actual weaving to be and I cut those pieces down to 44 inches. After that, I cut down 20 inch pieces because those are gonna be the pieces we weave the longer ones through. I spaced the shorter pieces apart by two inches and measuring to make sure both sides were equal and straight and then I taped those down directly to the table. You can weave this any way that you want. I decided to do it by groups of three and then I just went over and under each yarn piece going across and pulling it down to make sure that it was nice and flush. And then when I went to the next group, I just did the opposite of what I wove before. That way you get this little pattern. I definitely would say go wider than you think is necessary because I stopped right here and it was a little too short. Like I wish it was just a tad bit longer. So keep that in mind while you're doing this. But also, like I said, you can individually weave each piece or you can group it. I really like how the texture came out. Basically to just cinch this all together, I used hot glue on everything the sides of the yarns were touching, like any kind of end of the yarn to secure it all to itself. That way it didn't just obviously fall apart. I flipped it over and decided to glue the little phrase to the back of it. That way it looks like it has some sort of end or clean seam. I don't know if this necessarily works for all types of materials. If you have like rope or something, I don't think you'll be able to like fold it back on itself like this. Yarn works pretty easily though. After I glued everything together, I went in with my scissors and just cleaned up any extra yarn to just really give it a nice, clean, sleek look as much as possible. And then to attach it to the actual bench, I ended up having to staple it. I know I did not want to, but I didn't make it wide enough, hence why I said make it wide and a little bit longer than you originally intend because you're going to need it. I am super pumped with how this turned out. It tied everything in with the natural fibers and the wood into my office space. And yes, you're getting a sneak peek of it, but do not worry. I have a ton of videos coming out on how to curate this cozy moment right here, how I flipped this space once I got something else installed. It's just madness. But thank you again, Ben Ueda, for letting me test out your 2014 wooden wool bench. Everything is linked below for you guys. Check out his socials and I will see you Sunday for another DIY.